I'm Mark Milley, uh, General United States Army, retired. I was the 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and I was the 39th Chief of Staff of the Army. Well, you know, General Eisenhower, of course, was the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe and led the invasion of Normandy, the biggest invasion uh, in human history. Very complex operation involving 156,000 uh, airborne and amphibious troops in a 24-hour period landed here. Uh, part of them landed right here in St. Mary Glees. This is where uh, the 505th Infantry landed of the 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, this was an enormous operation that broke into Festung Europa uh, and began the liberation of France and into the destruction of Nazi Germany. <clears throat> and General Eisenhower not only led U.S. forces, of course, and after the war he becomes the President of the United States. So uh, this is a general of enormous importance to the United States, uh, and it's great that we're honoring him with an unveiling of his statue uh, here in the very first village, uh, very first town of France that was liberated in 1944. General Cavoli, who is the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe uh, today, he is the military descendant of General Eisenhower. General Eisenhower was the first Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, the first commander of NATO, actually, when NATO was formed in 1949. We're in the 75th year of NATO, uh, and we're in the 80th year celebrating the landings at Normandy. Uh, and what this is all about, the bookends for General Cavoli to be here and General Eisenhower's statue to be unveiled, is the importance of NATO and how important NATO is to the alliance of not only the 32 countries of, or the 31 countries of Europe, uh, plus the United States for 32 countries uh, total, uh, it's really critical to maintain the peace and stability on the continent of Europe. NATO is far and away the most successful military political alliance in human history, and to have General Cavoli here at the unveiling of General Eisenhower's statue is a very, very important symbolic move. Well, I think we all should uh, take solace and remember that uh, you know between 1914 and 1945, between the beginning of World War One. In the end of World War II, roughly speaking, 150 million people were slaughtered in the conduct of two great power wars. Uh, what Normandy means and what Eisenhower did uh, and the defeat of Nazi Germany, it ends World War II. At the end of World War II, uh, what we decided to do, we the Allies, the victorious powers, is to set up a, uh, a, a international rules-based order that established the United Nations, established NATO, and established a wide variety of other international organizations to prevent a third great power war. Uh, so what I said previously, what Eisenhower was living for was a better peace, uh, and what he fought for was a better peace, in the spirit of the phrase, never again. Uh, so never again should we ever have another great power war. If you think about the casualty rates, they were enormous. Uh, 26,000 Americans from Normandy to Paris were killed in action, not including uh, the French and the Germans and the British and the Canadians and the Polish troops there that were killed in those same battles. Uh, if you look into the Western Pacific or the Central Pacific uh, or the North Pacific, you look there, my dad hit the beach at Iwo Jima, 7,000 Marines killed in 19 days. The conduct of Great Power War has enormous cost and consequences. Uh, in World War II, it was the most destructive war in human history. So Eisenhower dedicated the remainder of his life to never again. It's the same phrase that you hear Israelis talk about or Jews worldwide talk about never again will they suffer the Holocaust and go to the uh, go to their death uh, in, in the various death camps like Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. Never again uh, was the motto of, of, uh, of General Eisenhower, and never again was also the motto of the sergeant. Many of these sergeants that were veterans uh, of World War II, that was their motto as well. Never again should we have another war of that magnitude, that severity, and all the suffering and casualties that went with it. Well, I'm just uh, very humbled personally to be here with General Cavoli, and of course we have the granddaughter of General Eisenhower here, Susan Eisenhower. Uh, we have the great people of St. Mary Glees here uh, to commemorate the unveiling of the statue of General Eisenhower, uh, one of the singularly great generals uh, in American history. Uh, and I'm personally humbled to be here and have an opportunity to make some remarks.